so the lesson today is how do we rotate shapes? How do we rotate points? And um, since my projector is out, I've got to make some sort of video um, that would let me be able to get the point across to you. Personally, I would love to be able to have each and every one of you come to my desk and let me show you how to do this on paper. But hey, we've got too many kids to do that within one class period. So this is the next best thing. After you watch this video, start your assignment. If you have questions, call me over immediately so that way I can try and help you. And hopefully this video will uh, cut down on, on a lot of the questions and it'll give you at least a place to start with. So here we go. Um, we're going to take a shape and we are going to rotate it. But when we say rotate it, we've got to understand something. What direction do we want to rotate it in? And um, there's two different directions. There's clockwise. And uh, basically what that would mean is, is if we, we took this triangle, we would rotate it around like a clock, okay? And we're going to talk about how many turns. This would be a quarter turn, this would be a half turn, three quarters, and this would be a full turn, and this is where you get back to exactly where you were. So again, a fourth turn, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths put you back to where you're at and you're going clockwise okay it's where you take one of these points and you just look at the direction it's going so this B would be going to the right like this see how it's going now what about the counterclockwise um, instead of clockwise counterclockwise is going to the left so watch this B right here watch this B we're going to move the B over here There we go. So one fourth of a turn, two fourths of a turn, same thing as half, puts it upside down. Three fourths, uh, you just keep on going around. It's like three partial turns there. And then one complete turn puts it right back to the beginning. So let's take a look at um, the degrees of this. And if we see 90 degrees clockwise, well, um, not that difficult. Basically, it's it's going to turn that way and if it's 180 degrees clockwise it's still going to turn to the the right 270 degrees this way 90 degree counterclockwise would be back to the left we'll get these direction lines drawn in here and then we'll go and, and do an example for each one of these so here we go let's take a look at 90 degrees clockwise um, let's make a copy of this okay so here's where it was originally, and when we rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, I want you to do a quarter turn to the right. And, you know, these new points, this would be A prime, B prime, and C prime. If we said 180 degrees clockwise, then what you do is you take it and you don't turn it just a quarter of a turn, not just one fourth. There we go, there's the one fourth. You would go two fourths, and it makes it upside down. Okay, so the direction tells you which way to turn the object, the degrees tell you how much to turn it by. And so now, here we go, 270 degree clockwise rotation. Here is 90. Now it's going to be 180. And then the next one is 270. And that would be the new... Uh, positioning for that triangle. The counterclockwise down here really is the exact same thing. It's just we're going counterclockwise. So 90 degrees would be turning it to the left one quarter of a turn. There we go. 180 degrees counterclockwise. We still have to go to the left, but it would be two fourths turn. So there's one fourth. Here's two fourths, and it makes it upside down. If you notice, it's as if you did 180 degrees clockwise. Well, 180 degrees counterclockwise is just a different way of getting there, but it's still 180 degrees turns the object upside down. And when we take a look at this 270 degrees counterclockwise, um, you know you've got to do a uh, three quarters turn to the left, so one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. Let me adjust this. There we go. I want you to notice something here. Um, 207 degrees going to the left is the same as going 90 degrees to the right. So take a look at this one and this one. And 270 degrees going to the right where we had to go around three quarters to wind up here is the same as 90 degrees counterclockwise. Yeah. But um, 
if you understand the basics of the clockwise motion and how many times to turn it for each degrees that it says you know 90 180 or 270 then we're pretty much ready for the main purpose of this lesson there's another method that I can teach you rotations on this coordinate plane um, but it's far more complicated and right now since everything we do is on uh, paper for testing I choose to teach you how to do it on paper. Um, it, it's a little bit easier to learn this little shortcut. So uh, over here on this left side is your paper, you know, and this would have your problem on it. It says rotate 90 degrees clockwise, all the points on here. This A needs to be rotated 90 degrees clockwise, the B does, so does the C. So we need to rotate all of that 90 degrees clockwise. And if you'll re recall, um, that means that we are going to turn it to the right one quarter of a turn. Okay, so you're going to take the paper, pretend this was your paper with the worksheet on it, and we turn it one-fourth of a turn to the right. And then on your notebook paper over here, you know, you, you'd write down, hey, here's number one, and you would write out A prime, D prime, and C prime in a way that lets you be able to record this information while your worksheet paper over here is um, sitting there turned 90 degrees. What we've basically been able to do is that we've been able to, to pretend that this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. And so you would look at your paper as it's turned and you go, well, 2 is my x value and 4 is my y value. So we write this down on the notebook paper. Um, then we come back and we take a look at another point on here. Um, 2 is my x value for C. And my y value in this case would be positive 3. And then the uh, last one would be B right here. Uh, that would be 4 for my x value. And my y value would be positive 3. Now, after you've recorded it down on your paper, you need to turn your paper back around. And, you know, you've not written on your paper or anything like that. And so then you, you focus on transferring this data into plotting it. Where is 2, 4 at? Well, 2, 4 is right here. And we know this is A prime, so go ahead and label that point in right away. B prime is 4, 3. And C prime is at 2, 3. And so now we just go ahead and we connect it. And I see that A goes to C. So A goes to C right here. C goes to B. So C prime goes to B prime. And A goes to B. So A prime to B prime. And in case you're wondering what I'm, I'm trying to uh, to show you is um, if I turn this paper um, a quarter of a turn, hopefully it will match up with that triangle and it should put us in there pretty good and it, it really does you'll see that it lines up and it's the same size triangle. Um, the reason it's throwing it off here is that uh, my paper sizing and the way I had to use this software it didn't match up but what I'm saying is, is when you turned your paper um, clockwise. In fact, let me just go ahead and fix that for us right now. Let me just go ahead and group all of this together. There we go. I want you to see how ACB right here falls into line where the primes are when I turn it a quarter of a clockwise. See, that's the shape that we wound up drawing. And what we did is in purple right there. See how it's like two blocks over? It's a block high. So let's take a look at this again. Two blocks over and a block high. See, that's what the rotating of that paper does to you is that as you rotate this paper over, it kind of does the rotation for you and you record the, the prime points over here on your regular notebook paper as you're looking at it right here. Turn your paper back. And then you take these points and you're able to plot them right here and connect them and you've, you've done the rotation. So let's do two more of these real quick. This is 180 degrees clockwise, so that means that we need to go to the right two turns, or two-fourths of a turn. So one-fourth, two-fourths. And now we can record over here 
our a prime would be, let's see, 1 is our x value. And let's see, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That would be a negative 3 on the y value. Um, let's take a look at our b prime. Let's see, that would be um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 for the x. And negative 2 for our y. Um, our x value is positive 2 for c prime. And we're, yeah, we're at negative 2 on our y value. So then you, again, after you've recorded um, the coordinates uh, for your paper, after you've flipped it around, turn it back the regular way. And take your pen and paper and take your recorded data right here for number two and go plot them. So here's one, negative three. So this is A prime. Let me move that down. I think that's going to be in the way for us. And B prime is negative three, negative two. So that's going to be B prime. And C prime is at 2, negative 2. And if you recall, 180 degree turn, basically what that does is it makes the shape upside down. And there you go. You have uh, drawn the rotation of this uh, triangle ABC 180 degrees clockwise. One more, and we will do a, a 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that means we're going to go to the left here. You know, it's like a clock running backwards. We're going to do one-fourth of a turn. Or a quarter turn. Okay, one-fourth to the left. And we just pull out our notebook paper and we record what we see. Um, even though you've turned this paper, we still pretend like the coordinate plane was never turned. We're, we're imagining only this triangle was turned. This is your y-axis. This is your x-axis. What do you see? I see C out here at negative 2. So here's C prime at negative 2 on my x-axis. And the y-axis is at negative 2 also. My B prime, let's see, it's at, at negative 2 on the x-axis also. And I'm at positive 3 on the y-axis. And the last one that we need is our A prime. That would be at negative 3, negative 1. And so now um, we just have to rotate this back around. Again, our Y and X axis are... are waiting right there for us. And so now we can just go and plot our information. I'll put this one in blue. A prime is at negative 3, negative 1. I don't know why I put a negative sign right there in front of it. So we'll call this A prime. Do your best to make sure that when you write a prime in there that we can see it. Okay, sometimes it, it hides in the line. So try to put the letters in a way that we can see it, right? Smaller, bigger, something so we can see it. B prime is at negative 2. Should be negative 3 right there. Negative 2, 3. So that would be B prime. Nope. Forgive me. This is what we do. When we've run into this type of situation, you just turn your paper and, and look at it again when you think you may have done something wrong over here. So let's let's try this again. A quarter turn counterclockwise. It looks like I was correct the first time. It should be negative 2, positive 3. So, but any time that you're doubting yourself, just go ahead, run it back, and check it again. So here's A. Label it so we can see the prime. Here's B prime. And here's C prime. 
and I see that A is connected to B, so I'm going to do A prime to B prime. B is connected to C in the original, so I'll do B prime to C prime, and then A to C, so here's A prime to C prime. And we've rotated uh, this red triangle ABC to um, 90 degrees counterclockwise. That's how we do it. Don't worry if the shapes over overlap each other. All you're doing is you're studying the coordinates of where the points go, and you get that after you turn the paper, um, you know, one-fourth, two-fourths, or three-fourths of a turn. Um, go ahead and try your assignment right now. If you've got questions, please call me right over, and um, once you practice it, once you understand the basics, you'll be fine. Until then, yeah, you might have some questions, but jump in, holler at me if you need me. Thanks.